Joining us right now, Assistant Secretary of Public Affairs for the Treasury Department, Tony Sayeg. Tony, good to see you, sir. Welcome. Good, good morning, Maria and panel. Great to be with you so all. So is the president's timeline correct? Should Americans expect to see the relief money in their paycheck just two months from now? Absolutely, Maria, and there should be no reason if we don't, uh, you know, obviously get this passed before Christmas that we can't get the IRS prepared and they're working and monitoring very closely uh, with us and watching what we're doing to make sure that the impact is felt in people's paychecks. This is exactly why we're doing it. This is exactly why the president all along throughout the year has pushed to make sure we got it done this year. And we anticipate that the feeling of benefit will happen rather quickly. Now, do you worry that because there are still some people who are seeing their taxes go up because of the elimination of deductions. Do you worry that those people who are the spenders, who obviously pay the most tax, are going to say, you know what, I got to pull in my spending in 2018 because of this, and we know that consumer spending represents two-thirds of the economy. Maria, obviously our intention all along has been to cut rates across the board. Uh, there could possibly be uh, an achievement of that in the final package. Uh, to do that, you have to broaden the base. To broaden the base, you have to get rid of a lot of deductions. Yeah. And, you know, these deductions tend to benefit very few people. Um, when you talk about the state and local tax deduction, we understand that it's a sensitive matter to many people. I'm a New Yorker. I'm sensitive to it. But in order to create a 50-state solution for your federal tax system, you, you can't necessarily necessarily focus on small little sandboxes you got to look at the beach and we are going to be much better served lowering the rates across the board for all Americans and the vast vast majority will realize very significant tax cuts especially middle income families like those who joined the president yesterday here in the White House Tony it's Dagan McDowell with deep respect broadening the base means essentially making people pay taxes who don't currently pay them and it's close to half this country pays no federal income tax. And we're hearing from, say, Senator Mike Lee, who said in a town hall, a telephone town hall yesterday, and they're talking about the child tax credit, which he and Marco Rubio wanted this very generous increase in the child care tax credit. A significant portion, we don't know how much yet, will be refundable up to the total amount of taxes paid, including payroll taxes. So Mike Lee's still talking about making the child credit it refundable for the even payroll taxes and I go to that point because that funds an individual benefit to the person and I just that's a really huge head scratcher for me Look, Diggin, I, I, I got to tell you, the expansion of the child tax credit is a very essential part of this tax bill. Uh, we want to ensure that hardworking American families, particularly those who have both uh, parents working, do receive some relief for that. But again, let's not focus on the small little aspects. Focus on the broad view. The broad view is we have created a pro-growth tax plan that will grow our economy at a sustained level of 3% that we all know and I hope all agree is the the best thing we can do for all Americans because what we do by mm -hmm. by accomplishing that is expand economic opportunity so more people have a chance to succeed and participate in the economy and that's exactly why when you when you do something this significant this comprehensive you have to look at the broad view not just these individual aspects of the plan yeah yeah but the thing is is Tony I mean th this this family tax credit is also creating winners and losers if you don't have children you don't get that benefit and also what about the families that are very well off. Uh, they're also getting the tax credit? Well, l listen, there's obviously caps to uh, income are caps, caps on who receives that. They'll ultimately be negotiated and released in the bill, Maria, but absolutely. There's also credits, by the way, for those who take care of um, adult dependents. Uh, there are things in this bill that ensure that hardworking Americans, particularly those uh, in middle income brackets, do receive benefits from the tax relief that are beyond just lowering their rates. And we believe that's an essential part to ensure that we do deliver a significant middle class tax cut. I, I Let's do. not also forget what we're doing on the yeah. on the business and corporate side. I mean, we're going to have pass-through businesses, which are small, medium-sized businesses, owner-operators, at historically low rates. We're going to have the corporate rate go down from 35 to potentially 20. 21 is now uh, the number that's being discussed. Obviously, Congress will release what ultimately is in there. But our belief is that's a dramatic reduction that will help workers increase paychecks, increase wage growth, and increase the investment of these dollars that are currently parked overseas in the trillions into the United States.
United States. We don't These are all positive with things. The, we don't have a problem with the business and the corporate tax. It's the individual side, Dagan. That's really so. It, it is so difficult for these guys to allow uh, the high earners to get any tax relief. I mean, it's incredible. It is a falsehood to call it tax reform if you're going to keep the alternative minimum tax for individuals. It's a parallel tax system, and that is not reform if that stays in place. How about based carrot on, interest? And based on the, the people I talked to last night, the individual AMT, still in there. First in, first out capital gains treatment for retail investors only still in there what? and then the Treasury Department is going to have to take a year to write the rules to decide who doesn't qualify <laughs> for the new pass-through rate. And then there's carried interest. Yeah, That's hey, still there. Hey, Why? Hey, Tony, it's Mike Baker. I'm sure, you, I, I'm sure you want to talk about the state and local tax issue, too. Uh, <laughs> but, but that's, that's I, not I, just I a New York. I quite considerably, I will say. Right. The salt is not just New York and Connecticut and New Jersey. It's been painted that way in California. California. It's California. a variety of other states as well. <laughs> is salt, is it, is it off the table? It's not going to be discussed? It's not possibly making its way back in? Or is it still up for grabs? Listen, as, as, as you've been seeing, the House had a solution for SALT where it allowed you to bring up uh, to $10,000 of relief on your property taxes. There's a current solution that allows you to take that $10,000 and potentially apply it instead to your income taxes. Bottom line is, and I live in one, <laughs> if you live in a high-tax SALT state, you're paying high taxes because your state governments are... Be, be making you pay high taxes, mm. not because the federal government doesn't give you a deduction. So the bottom line is, when you look at SALT, it is the largest, most regressive deduction that tends to benefit very few high-income, high-earning taxpayers in high-tax states. And in order to relieve the entire system of, and make sure we lower rates, you have to get rid of these types of regressive deductions. Yeah. Now, the jury is still out that the high earners, those people who are actually seeing their taxes go up, are going to pull in spending, and that's going to impact economic growth. I don't know. I, I agree with you on the corporate tax uh, cut, Tony. You know that. And